What's up guys and welcome back to my garage. If you're enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, I made a very, very big oopsie. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, make sure you go back and watch that previous episode. But I'm determined not to let anything like that happen to us again today. And instead, what we're going to try to do is actually work on a bike. I don't know if I want to keep the bike or, or try to flip it. I also don't know if I'm like leaning more towards the the chopper style or the cafe racer style that we had previously it looks like that is more the chopper style okay not too bad overall only 1800 bucks dude there's not even really anything that wrong with it i'm hoping we can buy the seat from the store and we wouldn't have to like make an additional trip out to the upholstery shop though we do still need to get the bright red interior for the uh, the Jesse or the El Camino. How much they want for this thing? Also, peep the exhaust, dude. That's kind of dope. It's already got a V8 in it. Okay, so they do come with a V8 sometimes. All the other ones that we've seen have just come with the the slant six, sort of the the inline six, just at a, a slight angle. It's got a couple hundred thousand kilometers on it, which is to be expected. Three-star rust condition, though. We might be able to just do a quick rust repair on it and make some more money. We are still kind of trying to get in that mindset again of, of making more money. As I mentioned in that previous episode, eventually I would like to purchase the uh, garage extension at, at some point. But rust condition on that, four stars, looks more like a two-star. Honestly, there's quite a bit of rust on that. I'm thinking, let's just buy another El Camino, because why not? It's only 10,000 buckaroonies. We'll do a quick rust repair. And then we definitely, definitely need to get this chopper, dude. It's it's just too cool to pass up. 1,800 bucks. And I'm pretty confident that this El Camino will turn over first try. Enter to sit. Kickstand, we can just put up like that. And then, I'm guessing we start it somewhere up on the up on the handlebars oh no oh no is it is it actually not even going to start okay so how would we get the bike to the garage then can we oh we can just carry it okay that works for me i'll just uh hoof it back to the garage oh we're gonna need a bike stand oh my so it does start it has a kickstart. For some reason, I was just expecting it to have an electric start. But let's sit back down on here. Kickstart. Get rid of that kickstand. I just want to see if we can ride this thing around. It's going to be a little loud, isn't it? Because we might be a little too a little too loud to actually ride with that exhaust. What the heck is going on? The exhaust is totally rusted out. Yeah, I think um, I think we'll just park it back in the garage, and maybe once it has a, a decent exhaust on it, we can take it back out. But I do still need that. Ooh, the brakes just barely work. Uh, I do still need that bike stand so we can work on the thing a little bit um, a little bit easier. So let's hop in, old girl here. I don't even think we've driven it since the big repair. Or rather, the big accident, the big oopsie. Still kind of beating myself up about that, not gonna lie, but what do you do, you know? I'll just have two. It almost happened again, dude. It almost happened again. I'll just have to, you know, save more frequently or something. But I'm pretty sure there was a bike stand in here. Hey, buddy. I got a joke for you if you want. Give it. My girlfriend asked me to be a bit more in touch with my feminine side. Okay. So I crashed the car, and then I ignored her all day for the reason. All right. I thought you were gonna hit me with like a job opportunity, but you just told me a story. Anyways, uh, bike stand 420, love that. And bike engine stand, we probably don't need it necessarily, but I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. Anyways, is there anything else here that we might need? Oh, dude, there's high horsepower spark plugs. For 15 bucks a pop, they're usually 9 bucks a piece. That might make the El Camino just a little bit faster. 
later. We'll we'll worry about that later. Hi. All right, bud. Where's my um? We just we literally just spoke. Where's my stuff at? Oh, it's right here. Thanks, buddy. I'm just gonna toss this in the bed, and uh, we'll make our way back to the garage so we can get moving on this motorcycle. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I can't I can't pick this up. For some, did you did you like glue it to the floor or? Yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but we probably don't need it anyways. The big thing was the was the bike stand, honestly. Oh, it's gonna happen again. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm dodging the fences. I just need to chill, dude. I just need to chill in this thing. Let's actually bring it alongside the shop here. And we'll head on back over to the dealership so we can pick up our other El Camino. It's got a couple of different color panels on it, but a respray is super, super easy. I was really hoping that the El Camino would just happen to have a red interior already. So then we could just, we could just swap them around. I'm thinking this thing has a transmission issue because as you can hear, I'm revving it up and it's barely moving. You know, if it is a transmission issue, I wonder how many gears it has. Oh, it's a five speed. Well, we could still, we could still swap it out for the, um, for the four speed that we have. Because we have, we have one of those still from something. Maybe the original V8 drivetrain. I, I can't I can't remember. But let's get this thing put up on the lift. I at least want to make it drivable. You know what I mean? Yeah, transmission completely shot. So we've got two bolts there. Three at... The front of the drive shaft, there we be. And then four up top. We actually need to bring it back down just a little bit so we can get those. Might have to move that guy out of the way. And then just one more little nut there on the starter wire. There we go. Out with the old, about to be in with the new, but we do need to, come on, stop. Stop moving on me. You're making this more difficult than it needs to be. We need to relocate this starter now onto this guy. And just like that, we can get it tossed back in the vehicle. And whoever the next owner is going to be should have a bit easier time actually driving the thing. Now, though, it's time for everybody's favorite part of the day, which is the rust removal. We've got to swap around our discs here really quick. And we'll get after it. A few moments later. Okay, now before you guys say anything, there was a really big, a really hard, a really difficult spot of rust back here that I had to take care of. So that's all that that is. All right, moving on. There was also a little bit of rust here on our uh, fuel tank for, for the bike that we just picked up. So I went ahead and, uh, and just took care of that. I believe that should be all the rust actually off of this thing yeah rust condition five stars let's check in now with this other el camino also five stars okay already looking at sixteen thousand buckaroos which is pretty nice definitely pretty nice so let's get that uh let's get that thing put away and we'll figure out our color code for this it's gonna be 42 1f 3e 42 1f 3 E. There we are. Nice dark purple. Kind of a kind of a good color, actually. And I'll I'll take it. Anything but green. At this point, anything but green. That actually doesn't even look like it's the same color. What the heck? Oh, okay, that's the that's the bike. 42 1 F 3 E. What did I what did I get? 42 1 F 3 E. Am I doing something wrong here? It actually looks like a different color. I'm starting to wonder if maybe the paint mechanic has been altered some way. Like, you see all the all the lighter areas that I just resprayed and then all the darker sort of splotchier bits? The, the dark areas are the correct color. It's the lighter areas that aren't. Maybe I just never noticed that before with, with the other paint colors that we've chose, but... 
What's our color condition? Yeah, four stars. I'm thinking there's been a change here. Kind of forgot about old Krusty over here. Let's go ahead and scrap that. 44 buckaronis. Not too shabby. And then 19,847 doll hairs. There we go. That puts us up to 37,000 bucks. And then we just need this guy. So we can start really, really working on this other motorcycle. With a lot of the cars, I kind of know by this point sort of where all the bolts are and how to properly take certain things apart. But when it comes to the motorcycle, I haven't the slightest clue where to even begin. So I'm really, I'm really going to be winging it today. Tell you that for sure. But let's start with this exhaust. I'm guessing there's probably just two bolts. And because one of these cylinders is actually bad, I'd like to take this thing out of here if we, if we can. Oh, what about the chain though? Okay, I guess it just decided to pop off. Anyways, where did that other exhaust pipe come from? Yo, was that on there the whole time? I swear I didn't even see that, but thankfully it's in decent enough condition. I think we can actually, I think we could actually keep this one. But yeah, the, the short one, that thing's dusted. Actually done for. And since we still have our engine stand stuck in the, stuck in the shop over there, we're gonna have to be just working on this thing on, uh, on the table. Let's try removing these ignition leads. Won't be needing those for a, for a few minutes at least. And then that must be like the fuel line or something on the back side there. Motorcycle mechanics cringing as they watch this. Because they probably at least have, you know, a pretty good understanding of, of what it is that needs to be done here. Oh, is that fuel filter? Oil filter. Okay, that makes quite a bit more sense. And then we have the filter cover, which is probably needing to be replaced. I don't think it's supposed to be that color. And over here, we've got whatever this thing is. It's especially difficult because I don't even know what to call certain things. The alternator rotor. Sure, that sounds, that sounds right. And where do we go from here? Maybe just those two bolts to get that one cover off. Sure as heck, there we go. Looks like we've got two bolts in here that would fasten on the alternator. One of them was already loose, which is kind of concerning, but that's the alternator. I guess, I don't, I've never seen an alternator like that before. And we've got a massive nut holding this sprocket on. Just the, the chain sprocket. Now if we just remove the gear shift lever. That's what I'm gonna call this thing. Yeah, gear lever, okay, that makes sense. Uh, I think we should be done now with this side of the engine. So we're gonna pick it up, turn it around, place it back up on the table, and uh, we'll try to disassemble this other side now. A lot of this is probably unnecessary. I'm just trying to familiarize myself with with these engines a bit more. Is that chrome? Kind of nice looking. And then this guy also, a bit of chrome on it. That's gonna be our Kickstarter. Oh, and then here's where we actually check the oil. If it will let me check the oil probably when it's actually in the vehicle I'm, I'm sure it it really does work now we've got a couple of bolts around here for this whole case i'm guessing that just kind of like pops off there we go and we've got another bolt at the bottom oh that's going to be the oil drain i bet internally it's looking really pretty good i think i'm going to try to remove just this one gear right there because i know there's a smaller one just behind it that one also looks fine yeah i think i think that's as much as we really need to deconstruct it but now i've got to figure out a way to actually get this one uh cylinder housing i guess you could call it a, a cylinder head got to figure out a way to get this removed two bolts right here on that sort of camshaft assembly what's this thing called oh my good god where did it go Okay, it just teleported back to where we just took it off of. Let's drop it over here. Yeah, that's just rockers. So four more bolts right there. And this whole thing should just come off. Okay, it's going to bring the throttle with it, I guess. And then that fuel line as well. So that is one whole piece. That whole rusty piece right there is, is one entire piece. We've got a small little gasket in here. That's going to be our cylinder head gasket. 
Looks like it's in good enough condition, so we can hang on to it. Uh, the bottom half of that cylinder head definitely needs to be removed. And then it looks like, unfortunately, we will have to disassemble it. Oh, God, what did I just loosen? Spam click with Titan, please. Okay, we're good. We're good. Everything's fine. But uh, unfortunately, we do have to disassemble it quite a bit more so we can actually access that piston. Oh, okay, just like that. It it just split apart on us, and then this guy fell out from God knows where, but it also needs to be replaced. But there we go. We've got our entire crankshaft assembly removed. Looks like the other piston is in good condition. So that's, uh, that's great news for us. Now we should just have two bolts out with the old, and we can buy brand spanking new. So we need a piston a filter cover and a camshaft for right now 48 bucks for a new piston and then i remember the chain being kind of rusty so i'm gonna go ahead and grab another one of those never hurts to have a brand spanking new chain and then what else we got in here crankcase was all good crankshaft was good uh cylinder we will need one of those 138 bucks 97 for the top portion of that, the head cover was totally fine. Oh no, I think I might have, I think I might have just bought the wrong cylinder. Here's the crankshaft. Let me scroll back up a little bit. There's our carb. Okay, chain cover. I think, I think we need a new one of those. Timing chain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy one of those. We probably don't need it. This would have helped. This would have helped setting it to the V2 so we could actually buy the right stuff. I don't I don't even think that piston that we purchased is is correct. So what we really needed was cylinder 2 for 195 and then cylinder head 2 as well. Although it was just called cylinder head. I'm going to wing it. Hopefully that's that's correct. That's the long exhaust so we need the short one right there check out the green see the green text at the bottom it says 500 cc that would be just if the engine had one uh one piston right basically one cylinder head so that would be the complete assembly of that one and this would be the complete assembly of the one that we actually need so that's the one we're gonna go with this guy i don't know i'm just gonna i'm gonna leave on the top of this barrel how about that and then maybe if uh if it ever becomes daytime we can just take these down to the pawn shop and get a couple of bucks back. So far, I wouldn't say that this has been difficult. It's just been different, right? Because I'm just, again, I'm not super familiar with, uh, with the motorcycles or the engines that actually power them. But we can now just get rid of all the, all the rusty stuff that we have no real use for. The camshaft, did I end up buying a camshaft? If I did, I'm not seeing it out here also i don't think we actually needed to buy this uh this timing chain yeah it says it says 500 cc on it so i'm gonna put that with those other 500 cc parts grab our wrench and uh, i guess we're gonna buy a, a new camshaft it's gonna be 5175 for that guy and then i'm looking for a cover i think it's just called cover or maybe filter cover this guy that doesn't look right. Maybe. Oh, okay, yeah, it, it totally is. That's the replacement for this brown one. I think that's rust on here. So now that we've got our new camshaft, we can take our old one and scrap it, just like we've been doing with several other of these parts. And for this chain, I think we're probably going to have to remove it with this. Or not. Can we just remove it by hand? Oh, okay. Well, that's... That's handy, literally. Let's get our new one fitted up. Come on, guy. What are you doing? All right, we'll we'll uh, we'll come back to the chain. We'll come back to the chain. And I couldn't help but notice we actually have a little bit more rust right in there. And there was just a tiny bit on the backside of that, that fender. But that should be actually it now. There is still another rusty part on there. But I think we're probably going to have to grab our wrench, which is over here. Just to uh, just to get this loosened up. 
so that'll be the sort of the kickstand and then the pegs like the foot pegs got a bolt down there and a bolt right there perfect so we need pegs okay that was pretty close with my description and then a kickstand 24 15 for pegs and 36 80 for the new kickstand perfect how do you think we remove the seat we've got maybe one bolt in there See if we just loosen the one bolt, if it'll pop off. That was for the fuel tank. Actually, that's a good thing that we just removed that, because there's even more rust on the on the underside of it. Found it. Found it. We got two big old bolts just underneath the seat. Now we can remove that. And again, hopefully, fingers crossed, we've got a replacement seat in here somewhere, and we don't actually have to go to the interior shop. I don't think, I, I, dude, I don't think either one of these are right. Unless this one is. No, it looks completely different. Yeah, it doesn't even, it doesn't even bolt up at all. It's a completely different shape and style. Hey, we've got more stuff to bring over to the pawn shop guy at a later date. I say we just slap this thing back on there and, uh, and we write it as is for the time being. And then when we do actually end up going to the upholstery shop, we can see if maybe they have one, and uh, and we'll get it we'll get it swapped around. Now that we know it's just two bolts, shouldn't be um, shouldn't be a big deal. So let's get that thrown back on there. And now with all of that done on the frame and everything, I think we're ready to start trying to reassemble this engine. It's a bit daunting, honestly. When I was kind of taking it apart, a bunch of stuff just kind of flew everywhere, and I don't really know where any of it's supposed to go. So this will be fun. So far, I've only installed two things the gearbox and the the crankshaft assembly and i'm kind of stuck i honestly don't even know where to go from here i'm guessing i need to maybe put that case on oh hang on okay this isn't so bad this isn't so bad but tossing in all these gears just kind of willy-nilly might be an accident could be an accident waiting to happen okay starter goes right there Gotcha. That's going to go right here. I feel like I probably should have put these in somewhere. Or wait, alternator rotor goes on the outside, kind of. Okay, this goes here. Got several bolts holding that thing together. And then this might have to go somewhere in here. Dude, I'm just, I'm just trying everything at this point. Maybe now we can just toss this cover back on. And there's probably some other things on uh, on the opposite side of the engine that need addressed first. Is there another bolt on that? There is. One more down at the bottom. All right. Let's, uh, again, rotate this thing around and, uh, and get it back up on the table. Oh, yeah, dude. We've still got plenty of other things to do on, uh, on this opposite side, starting with the alternator. That's going to go right there. Two bolts on the inside. One of them was loose when I started taking this apart, so it's probably a good thing I deconstructed the entire uh, the entire deal. Now that can go right there. We've got one nut fastening that on. This, I guess, goes there. Does the camshaft go inside of the head? Or where's this thing supposed to go? Oil filter should go in that passage right there. Then we have... A brand spanking new filter cover. Next up, probably the alternator cover. That's going to go right there. Three bolts holding that thing on. This still looks a little strange, but I'm going to continue with cylinder two now. I think that's the bottom of the cylinder. So that's going to go right there. Four bolts to fasten that thing on. Next, head gasket. Very, very important. And the cylinder head should go just above that. See, but where, where does this cam go? Where does it go? I know the rockers go up here. That's just two bolts. That's fairly straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, air filter, still no real clue. I think that's one of the, maybe the first things that we removed. Got four bolts there for the top. I'm thinking we probably need to get the carb on next. And then the air filter will be somewhere, somewhere around there. We've got just one hose clamp. There we go. Okay. We found the location for the air filter. That's good. 
that's good. We're we're doing better. Slowly but surely, we'll get this thing completely reassembled. My money's on the on the camshaft needing to go somewhere down here in the bottom end. I think I might have jumped the gun maybe on a couple of things. And that's why it wasn't letting me put it anywhere. So let's rip off this panel again. It's definitely saying that it goes here. But why? Oh, I get it. We've got our, our push rods right there. Okay. Okay, I understand now. That's honestly helping me. Do we have a bolt that needs fastened or something? What the heck? Can we just we can just tighten that and it'll and it'll work. It'll just go. It'll do the thing. Lastly, just gotta toss our cover back on here. And then I think we're about ready to get it dropped back into the uh, into the frame of the motorcycle itself. Kickstart's gonna go on this side, one bolt, fastening that thing together. And then we'll rotate it around again. I think the gear lever or the gear shifter needs to go right there. Again, just one bolt holding that thing on. Or wait, we've still got one cover left. Hang on, I can only pick this thing up from, from certain pieces of it. So it's actually it's actually kind of hard to to maneuver around. I think we needed this on there. Oh no, it still works. Okay. We're chilling, dude. We're chilling. It's all together. So now if we come back down here, one nut there, one nut there. Grab our chain. And we'll see if we can get the chain installed. Is it not the right chain? Moments later. You know, I feel like I've tried everything, but what I haven't tried just yet is removing that gear. Let's get the rear wheel reinstalled. One nut there, one nut on the opposite side. Drop the wrench. Come on, dude. Why is this so difficult? Like, is there a is there a master link or something on here that I need to that I need to take apart before I can actually get it installed? I have tried literally everything, you guys. Everything. I th I think I I think I've just got to Google it. I got to see if the old Goog can help us out. More moments later. Okay, several minutes later. The only thing I could find was like an hour long video from someone just rebuilding the entire bike. And uh, it seemed like all they did was have the rear wheel just completely off of the bike. Okay, so we've got that done. And now we should be able to just get the chain on. Okay, it works for them, but not for me. Many, many minutes later. I figured it out. I finally figured it out you guys if you're having a similar issue it's because you're under the l500 category when you need to be under the hardy category that's what that bike is actually called so 54 dollars and five cents later we have another new chain though this one will actually mount up i i've probably spent 30 45 minutes doing the exact same thing. By definition of insanity, expecting a different result. And it turns out I just had the wrong chain. So that's good, that's good. I'm, I'm glad that we got that sorted. Now if we can just get the rest of this thing pieced back together, I think we'll go ahead and, uh, and just paint it probably in the next episode. I did wanna do it today, but honestly, I've, I've run out of time. I just, I don't have enough time to continue working on it today but there you guys have it we have a almost completed let me get the exhaust on and then we'll then we'll check it out again i'm not sure why but these two bolts are pink now they're securely fastened they're just pink for whatever reason but honestly i don't care i'm i'm done for the day dude i'm i'm over it we've got the chopper mostly assembled just needs paint and uh we'll address the pink bolts at a later date. So I do think that's probably where we're gonna wind things down at for today. But once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching guys. Peace.